is to remind all the husbands that tomorrow is Valentine's Day. I always feel like that's just a great public service enough. I need to start starting you off at least with that. Um, whether you buy anything or not, you've been forewarned. Okay. <laughs> so. I always want to, uh, to talk about Valentine's Day, though. It's always neat because then you always find the interesting things like, you know, whenever you ask little kids, you know, all, about love and all that. It's always interesting about how sweet and innocent sometimes they'll, they'll say uh, answers for that. And I want you to know just from the bottom of my heart from where I am, uh, you know, if I was to ask you, if I start saying, you know, what is love? And your answer is the 1980s song, Hey, Baby, Don't Hurt Me. We can be friends. Okay? <laughs> just want to let you know that from the top of my heart. Um, What's interesting, though, to me is whenever we talk about love, isn't it so? Isn't it so odd that it is usually so conditional? Hey, I love you if I love you when I love you. All of these types of things, and, and it's on that condition that, or the idea of love being in a condition, that I really want to give your your thought process today. Even though we're going to be talking about a hailstorm. I, I want you to sort of stay with me long enough to see how this connects, okay? It really is down to what is it that you're doing for me, and as long as you're doing that for me, will I love you? That's, that's kind of the idea here. And I want you to know, it, we're, we're in the book of, of Exodus. If you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up. Take the time. Uh, open up that app, whatever it is that you happen to use. Exodus chapter 9 is where we're going to be. The great thing about I didn't even touch anything. Um, the great thing about uh, the uh, the twelve place I'm gonna stand still. Is that me? Okay. The, uh, I'm gonna stand still. I'm gonna even stand even further. So turn this off and turn this on. Okay. All right. I'm just gonna stand very still today, which is gonna be very odd for me. It's what we do. Um, and if I move too far away from this, I apologize. I will stand my best, try to do my best to stand right here. One of the problems that we end up having, we end up having, we may study the book of Exodus, is that we continually just sort of read these things and we go, oh, that happened a long time ago. And if we're not really careful, what will end up happening is that we will, in our mind, sort of write them off as in another movie or another story. Or it just, it didn't really happen. It was just kind of, uh, you know, it's just something that, uh, again, it's, it's a fairy tale for us. And I want you to know that whenever we're reading this, especially when we get to this part of Exodus, these things are so phenomenal that, yes, you're correct. They sound as if they came out of the movie. However, I want you to know that this really did ha- these things really did happen. And what's even more phenomenal is that even, even this many years later, Israel is still talking about it. I want you to think about that for just a moment. There are things that, that happened in the book of Exodus that the children of Israel still are talking about today. Why is that? Because they really did believe they happened and that we have our recording of them. What's often interesting is, is as you're reading through the book of Exodus, you get to chapter 9, you have the, the, the plague of livestock at the beginning of chapter 9. You have the plague of boils. And both of these are very short plagues, a lot, not a whole lot of verses there. And then all of a sudden you get to snail storm. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm going to turn my, my, my lapel off because that's what's feeding me through. I'm sorry. You end up having what's called a hell storm. What's interesting about this is that there's some, some of your versions. The, okay, and I want you to know. The little, the little breakouts of each... Of each So it wasn't me. Hallelujah. Can I turn my microphone back on so I can move? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> it's, a little th- it's a little things in life, I promise you. All right, we're going to try this again. Oh, I want you to know I'm having, I always tell people, I wish I could tell you what's going on inside my head when I'm up here speaking. The fact that me having to stand in one spot for a very long period of time was not going to be pleasurable. Oh. <laughs> Little things in life. Okay, so where I was at, in your, in your, in your Bible, 
you have little divisions, okay? The, the, the publisher goes through and puts in these little things, and they'll tell you, like, they'll give you a little title. Some of your Bibles actually will say something along the lines of, this is the seventh plague, uh, hail, or it'll say hail and fire, okay? I want you to know, whenever I title something or someone else titles something, they're not doing it wrong. They're, they may just disagree with you. Understand that that's all extra stuff that we as humans have put into that, okay? And I want you to know, because whenever I talk about it, some of you are going to go, hey, Pastor, my Bible says that that, that plague was called hell and fire. Yes, and it's not wrong. I'm just telling you that from my perspective, the biggest problem here, it really is the storm, is the hailstorm that's getting ready to affect Egypt, okay? So let's dive into it. If you have your Bibles, again, chapter 9, we're going to start around about verse number 13. And it is my intention to read most of this, okay? So, it uh, doesn't mean that we're going to get to, but we're, we're going to try, try our best. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and present yourselves before Pharaoh, and say to him, Thus saith the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all of my plagues on you yourself. And on your servants and on your people, so that you may know that there is none like me on all the earth. For by now I could have put on, out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut from the earth. But for this purpose I have raised you up and showed you my power, so that my name will be proclaimed in all the earth. Verse 17. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. It's very interesting to me on this, okay? There's some things that I want to point out to you. What's, what you might be reading there is there's this phrase in there, specifically it's right around verse 14, and it says this, it says, I will all of my plagues. Now, what you're instantly thinking is in your head, you're going ahead and adding all ten of them together. But I know you're doing that because I do that. But what he really is saying is this, this is the full consequences of God's plagues. I want you to know so far, how many, how many people... Have, have perished because of the plague so far? And the answer is, even if you come up with a few, the answer is really not many. Other things have died, right? We've been, we've been annoyed, we've had the gnats, we've had the flies, we probably have wished for death. The blood, we know the water turned into blood, we found more water. No one really has perished for it. Inconveniences, those types of things. Whenever God here is saying all of my plagues, he's talking about the full consequences of God's plagues. And I want you to know from this point forward, people are going to lose their lives. This is a, a wake-up call for Pharaoh. What's also interesting in this process is that uh, some of your versions, I think they probably do the word better. Because uh, they'll say, uh, I will send all of my plagues on you yourself. Some of your versions will actually say your heart. And I want you to know, I think that's probably a better word there. Why is that? I want you to think about this from, from Pharaoh's uh, point of view. So far, his magicians, or his friends, are the ones who've said, hey, we can do the exact same thing Moses' God is doing, so Pharaoh can even follow them. He's had other things happen, and what would he do? He went and prayed. He said, hey, Moses, go pray for me. So that uh, these things can stop. They're, they're, again, they're an inconvenience. The frogs are here, the flies are here, whatever it happens to be. And what would he constantly do? Even the last one that we read, what did the Pharaoh do? At the end of it, what did he say? He ended up going, I want to get to hardening his heart towards the things of God. So, what is, what's actually happening here? What's God saying through Moses? Pharaoh, now, I'm only coming after you, but I'm coming after your heart. And I want you to know from a perspective where I come from studying God's word. Whenever God says, I'm coming after your heart, what, is that real, what should that do to you as a Christian? I want you to know that should, that should send shivers up and down your spine. Because if he's coming after your heart, that means there's nothing that he's going to stop at before he gets to you. What's it? So again, I'm a, so let's, again let's, make, let's make ourselves fair. Okay? What, is he, what is he going to do? Hey, I'm going to put my magicians here and I'm going to hide behind. I'm going to put my pride here and I'm going to keep hiding behind. I'm going to keep doing it. Look, I can get out of this. I can get out of this. I can get out of this. I can get out of this until what? There's nothing left. 
God now is pointing out and saying, no, no, Pharaoh, I'm coming after you. And whenever he says this, I want you to understand, he says, I'm coming after you. I'm coming after your heart. I'm coming after your servants because you continually lead these people and they will not believe in, in, in Yahweh. They will not believe in God. So we can have a whole sermon right there, stopping right there, talking about you and your influence. I want you to know that. I'm not. But you could. And your people. Pharaoh, you have all of these people, adult, and what are you going to constantly do? Run away from God. Not only that, the Lord reminds Pharaoh in verses 15 and 16. Go back there and read with me. Go back there and look at it one more time. This is for but now I could have put out my hand and struck you. What's interesting about this is this is an, this is an interesting conversation that's kind of happening between God and Pharaoh through Moses. I want you to know, Pharaoh, I could have struck you down at any point in time. I could have used any one of those former plagues, the livestock, I could have used the frogs, I could have used the water, and you would be dead. However, what did he, what did he also say? However, you were spared to show God's power and God's glory. I don't know about you, but there's certain times whenever you look, and I, I, I want you to know, most of my memories are, are, are faded, and I try not to talk about them too much, but there's some things that, you know, you just do stupid things. You ever been there, done those? And you go, I probably shouldn't be here right at the moment. If, all the, if I actually got all the consequences for all the stupid things I've done in my life, but you are. Why are you? Why? Ask the question, why? And I want you to know, at the end of the day, you'll get to the answer, you were spared to do what? Show God's power and God's glory. Exact same way as Sarah. Now, what's also interesting is, I want to continue one more thing on this. Let's just be honest. It's not, it's, I want you to know, yes, it's written there. It's actually verse 17. But apparently, Pharaoh still hasn't learned his lesson. Because read, read verse 17. What is Moses saying to him? You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Pharaoh, you're still being, um, still being you. You're still being adversarial. You're still trying to be, I'm trying to think of words I can use inside of a church service. Um, you know, you're being, uh, you can insert whatever, whatever derogatory term you'd like to use against Pharaoh at this point in time. You're being that. Why? Because Moses has come to you, Aaron has come to you, God, through God, and say, look, let my people go so they may worship. And you continually say, no. Pharaoh, at the end of the day, this turns into a heart issue. Where is your heart? And I want you to know, if you're studying and reading along with me, but this is an easy one to go forward with, I'm going to ask you right now, where is your heart? What's your heart doing? Are you, are you protecting me behind other things to keep trying to give God the excuses so that you don't have to deal with the things of God? Or are you going to say, you know what? I might as well go ahead and, and, and follow now. Where are you at with your heart? Let's keep going. Verse number 18. We're going to keep reading just a little bit more. Behold, about this time tomorrow, what, what is, I always love what Moses does, what God does through Moses. What does he say? Well, look, about this time tomorrow, this is what's going to happen. And in verse number 18, you read there, he says, The hell will fall, such as never has been in Egypt from the day it was founded unto now. Now, this is important. Why? Uh, I went back and used a word that I think was way overused in the, in the year 2020. And that was unprecedented, Right? I say that word, and some of you give you, some of you, gives you like nightmares because you, you heard the word unprecedented every day, right? Especially if you're in the school system. I was like, we are in unprecedented times. I'm going, with the school system, shouldn't you all have a better vocabulary than just the one word unprecedented? But that's just something, okay? <laughs> An unprecedented storm. What, what's very interesting about this, and I, I, we do have to talk about it just just for a moment. Something that you may not know if you, if you didn't study just a little bit extra. In the land of Egypt, and specifically at where they are in the land of Egypt, 
to, to receive a hailstorm of any kind was off. Okay? We live in West North Carolina where you know you get just enough cold and just enough rain and okay, now in this section of the world, it really doesn't happen. Also, uh, because of the hailstorm, we actually know when the rainy season is for Egypt. So they were used to rain. We're probably just a little bit past that. So for them to say that there's any storm, for them is like, um, no, Moses, the, the rainstorm, that was, that, was, you know, that was two months ago. You have to walk in with both of those little pieces. Because what Moses is saying is, look, there's going to be an unprecedented hailstorm. Keep reading. Verse number 19, you can, you can keep on going through there. Now, therefore, send your, your livestock that all you have in the field is safe shelter, and every man, the beast, the field that you brought home. Whoever feared the Lord of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh hurried his slaves and his livestock into the houses. But whoever did not pay attention to the word of the Lord left his slaves and his livestock in the field. Now, therefore, sin. What's interesting is God here is even, even now, let me tell you how you can avoid this, Pharaoh. There's a warning here. Did you know that? No, there's a warning. What's interesting to me, again, I, I don't want to take too much of the church and put us into the Old Testament, but there's so much that I really do believe we as the church find ourselves not only as Pharaoh, but probably find ourselves as Pharaoh's listeners because we just go, eh, that won't happen now. Right? We have a Bible that is full of warnings. One of the biggest warnings in, that, in this Bible is that if you live, live this life and you die and you die without Christ as your personal Savior, there's a warning. Where does it say you will spend eternity? It says you spend eternity in hell, eternally separated from the pleasures of God. That's a warning. And yet we as Christians we immediately just go along like, yeah, it's okay. Someone else will take on that warning. Someone else will take on that responsibility. Whenever church, we have, we have a Bible, we have an opportunity to go and share it. We just say, eh, that's someone else's job. You can guarantee you that there was someone in Pharaoh's group that did exactly that same thing. Eh, that's someone else's job. Eh, Moses is not really telling the truth, even though I've seen things I can't explain. Eh, someone else. Have you found yourself there? I know I have. It's not time for you to raise hands, but I want you to know you can eat it in your mind. Raise your hand. Get it down there. What does it take to not only get your heart, but what does it take for you to take on the warnings that God has placed upon you? What's interesting is that God provided the way. Who those who fear, those who obey Yahweh's warning, know that their own gods and Pharaoh cannot protect them. This is what's interesting. There are some people who actually believe Moses. Now, the reason that this is included is not, well, it kind of is for you and me to be an encouragement, but uh, this really is for Pharaoh, okay? So make you Pharaoh wherever he's at, standing right here again. I want you to see what he has to see. The whole purpose of this verse is for Pharaoh. Because Pharaoh here is still saying what? I don't believe in Moses. I don't trust him. I am right and you are wrong, Moses. But then what does he see some of his own servants going and doing? He sees some of his own servants leaving and going, what? We're going to go take our stuff in because we really, really, really believe Moses is right. That's not for us. That's for Pharaoh, for him to go, wait. Even the people who are underneath me are not following me? Why are they not following me? You're not following you, Pharaoh, because you're not following God. And again, I can make this whole sermon. We can have, I want you to know, I probably should have. Probably, probably this whole sermon in about two or three parts. You really could talk about us as leaders. If you have leaders, you have people who are following you, where are you taking them to? Whether that's your, your boss, your manager, your family, whatever it happens to be. Where are you taking them to? Now, what we've done so many other times, let's talk really quickly about. Uh, about some of the uh, the Egyptian gods that we're going to take on here, because again, this is going to be a hailstorm coming out of the sky. Uh, now, the one I want you to know, this is a two for one. I got. I'm hoping my laser pointer works. Yeah, it does. Um, 
So Nuit is actually the goddess of the, of the sky or the air, and she's actually depicted as that blue thing right there. Um, and it's actually most of the Egyptian drawings, she's actually drawn this way. As in she's the air that surrounds the land and the sky and all those other things. Why would that be important? Is because she's the one who's actually good. Where, where's, where's the hail and the lightning and the thunder going to come from? The sky. Uh, the other one is the shoe, which is the atmosphere. And I can't make this up. The, it's the one that's actually holding. Oh, make sure that's not doing. It's the one that's actually holding up. No, not going to give you. And then again, if you don't have a belief in God, I want you to know you have to come up with some really odd, strange things to make it all fit. It's one of the things I love about believing in God. I, my, my belief is a lot simpler. I don't have to believe in 17 different things holding each other up. No, God's holding all of them together. It's really easy. And after she was Isis, and I, I, uh, or Isis, however you want to say it. Um, and this is actually the god of agriculture. And she is usually drawn right there in the bottom and uh, has wings. Why? I'm not sure. I didn't study that either. Why is this important? Again, I want to show you to the point, the fact that if, if you do not have a belief in God, you do have to, you have to come up with some really strange and odd things. If you do not have a faith and belief in God, what is it that you're actually using to hold everything together? And where do I have to eventually get to churches? I have to eventually get to the place where I go, look, if we have a belief in God, then why are we not living the life that looks like? Let's talk about some of the results. Verse number 22. I told you I'm going to get through. I'm trying to get through most of this. 22 and 23. I want you to know. And 24. I can sum up for it. And we'll skip these three verses. Why? Because it happens over and over and over again. God said. Moses obeyed. And God did. That's it. That's, those are the three verses. Look at the root book. Then the Lord said to Moses. Verse 23. Then Moses did what? He stretched out his hand. And verse number 24. And, then, and what happened at the end of that verse? And the Lord bring down hell upon the land of Egypt. God said, and Moses obeyed, God did. <coughs> right. But is that where soft answers absolutely not? You read all the way down there, verse number 20, start in verse 24. And then there was there was hail and fire flashing continually. Um, well, what would we call fire flash? But, well, we, today we call that lightning. But also we have to understand that lightning will strike things, causing fire. Continuing in the midst of the hill, very heavy hill, such as never been seen on the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hell, verse 25, struck down everything that was in the field and in all the land of Egypt, both man and beast. One of, the biggest, one of the biggest differences that we have here is that we have the first loss of what? Life. Human life. And the hail struck down every plant in the field and broke every tree in the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the people of Israel were, was there no hail. There was such a ferociousness with this. I, like, you know, I want you to know, for those who have lived, maybe you've, you've, you've lived through, uh, you've, you've You've run through hurricanes, uh, major storms, those types of things. That's the world you need to get back into to have this idea. Uh, what's, I forget what the, the guy is uh, from, uh, from the Weather Channel. Um, I think his name is uh, like. We know he always shows up whenever there's a giant storm coming. If this, if, if this would have been happening, he would have been the end with Egypt. Why? There's a giant storm coming. He wanted to be out there on the front lines telling you how hard it's raining. I believe you, John, okay? But look, I see this. What happened for those who did not listen? What was spared? The answer is nothing. 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 Whenever you get to the place in life, whenever you are the Pharaoh, and you, you, you continually put things in front of you, what will God spare to get to your heart? The answer is... Nothing. All spared. The answer is nothing. What happened to the people of Israel? Read verse 26. What happened to them? Nothing. Why? God told them that he was going to protect them. 
And so, again, make, uh, a couple weeks ago we said this. So imagine Pharaoh again. This is happening. He saw the loss of life. He's probably someone close to him may have died, all those types of things. He's lost the cows and all these things. Can you imagine him singing? Him going, hey, I wonder what's happening over in Goshen. I wonder what's happening. And they can't go there because of, uh, the storm is just outrageous. But he's going to find out later that nothing happened there because they were being protected. There's also thunder and lightning. Lightning starts to ground. That's where we get the fire from. What's interesting? So let's keep going. Verse 27. What do you do whenever, what did Pharaoh have to do to him? He saw the loss. What did he do? Call for Moses. Verse 27. The Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned. The Lord is, the, is in the right. And I and my people are in the wrong. Plead with the Lord that there uh, for there has been none, uh, there has been enough of God's thunder and hail. And I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. We have to talk about something. Was this repentance? I want to tell you the answer to that is no. One of the hard things about being a Christian, being a uh, being a pastor, hearing people talk, living just living life, living a Christian life. You need to understand the difference between acknowledgement and repentance. What is acknowledgement? Acknowledgement is saying, yes, I did something wrong. If that's where it stops, is that repentance? Repentance is, I have done something wrong, God. Let me turn away from it and go a different direction. What did Pharaoh do? Was the, do you see the do you read with me? Read this. Make sure I'm not reading something in scripture that's not there. Do you see where Pharaoh turned away from his sin? I don't know about you, but I don't see it. If you see it, please let me know. So what did he do? He acknowledged it. The only reason that he was acknowledging it was why? Wanting it to stop. And he's actually not wanting the he's, not, he's wanting the punishment to stop, not the cause. For you see, if, if I actually say, hey, look, I'm, I'm wanting to repent of the sin, and I'm wanting to repent of what I'm doing, there's a turning from it so that I can go a different direction. Church, it doesn't take me very long to get into my own personal life, to get your own personal life, and say, how many times have I went to God with the acknowledgement of sin, but not necessarily the repentance of that sin? God, please forgive me, which he will. How many times have we prayed to God, God, let me repent, let me, let me turn from this so that I can go a different direction? Pharaoh, you're still in sin. Has it changed? He's still in a place of just where he thinks he should be. Moses said to him, as soon as I have gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hand to the Lord. The thunder will cease. Um, there's a group of people, and I, I can't say that they're right. I can't say that they're wrong. I actually have the belief that whenever Moses and Aaron, as they walked, that none of this was affecting them. Okay? They could have walked through the hailstorm and not been touched. I have no problem with that belief. Why? Because who sent the hail? God. I believe God's in charge of all of it. But it's also not in God's word either. Okay? So, whenever you read things like that, go, okay, I can see it. Be, be, be open with it. Like, I can see that. But it's not in God's word. What is in God's word? Moses somehow got there. Whether he was already in the, in, in the kingdom or however, he gets there. And this is what he does. He knew that Pharaoh's arrogance had not yet been subdued. Verse 30, I love this. But as far, but as for you and your servants, this is Moses speaking again, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Again, church, let me, let me 
just get to a place. Let me, let me get to a place where I, I think a lot of us are. How many of you have, have someone in your life? Pick somebody that you trust enough that they would come to you and say, I don't believe that you actually believe in God yet. Do you have enough love for somebody to say that to them? Can I tell you one of the hardest things that I've, uh, one of one of the hardest things I've ever I've ever done was uh, I was actually counseling a, a couple and they were wanting to join the church. So okay, listen to uh, I listen to I, what I do typically. Hey, tell me, uh, give me your testimony. Tell me about some of the things that are happening. The the wife, the lady went first. I was great. I was checking out things. The husband starts speaking. And I would go, that's interesting. And he wouldn't stop. And I go, that's interesting. And I got to the end of it, and I said, I want you to know something. From the bottom of my heart, you can get mad at me, you can get up and leave, but you need somebody in your life. I want you to know, I don't believe you're saved. You ever said that to somebody? And they stay in your office? As I was ready for him to do what? Punch me in the face, uh, yell at me, or at least get up and leave. He did. I want you to know, two weeks later, he came back to me and he said, Pastor Mark, why, why did you say that to me? And I told him. And I said, it's not the way that you say it. It's not anything else. It's I do not believe that you're saved and you're telling me your, your testimony. What's very interesting in that fact is that uh, they as a couple did not, they actually stayed being part of the church. They did not join the church because we could not, in good conscience, allow both of them to be church members. About a year after, I think it's about a year after, after we left, Found out that during the service, the husband came forward. He confessed Christ as saved. He lived and walked in the life. Why? Because he had people willing to love him enough to look at him and say, I don't believe you're saved. Church, let me ask you. Whenever Moses does this, I don't believe it. I don't know, I don't know if you really do believe yet. Let me ask you. you have, I know you have people in your life that do not know Christ. Have you asked them? Have you talked to them? Let me encourage you to do so. I want you to know that if you keep reading this, verse 31 and 32, um, there's this really odd section. And I, don't, I want you to know where I was reading and studying and why in the world I'm talking about things, verse 31 and 32. Why, are we, why didn't they even put that in, in, in God's Word? Why do I care about how flax is doing and barley and, and the winter wheat and all these other things? It, it, I, don't, I don't care. But can I tell you who does? It's Pharaoh. Again, read this from his perspective. What has it been destroyed? All the things that Egypt uses for economic trade, for things that make, make it clothes and other things, these were, the, these were the crops that were destroyed. Pharaoh, even in his arrogance, even now, after he's seen it, even though he's going to ask Moses, hey, pray for this to stop. Even now, he's still calculating, how can I get out of this? How can I do this? How can I move? How can I not be held accountable for all the things I need to do? Oh, you know what? That's right. This is to sort our economics. We're going to be fine. I got money. Well, I got money. The rest of them know. I got money. We'll be fine. We still got food. I can still feed everybody. Moses, I don't care. You ever had this argument with God? Because I want you to know, if you stay tuned to the rest of the story starting next week, what's, what are the locusts going to come do? Or need everything else. But why? Because Pharaoh believed that he could survive without God. 
Verse 34. But when Pharaoh saw the rain and the hail and the thunder, it ceased. He sinned yet again. And for acknowledgement, again, he never went to repentance. And yet again, he ordered his heart, he and his servants. Now I want you to hear something. Pharaoh turned his heart once the storm was over. Moses, you went and did the, I need you to go do this for me. You went and did the, okay, I'm off the hook, so I'm not responsible anymore. So I'm just going to go, I'm going to go live my life the way I was living it. I've acknowledged, I've acknowledged God. I've acknowledged I've sinned. I'm not repenting. I've just acknowledged I've sinned, but I'm going to keep doing it. But I want you to see something that's very unique here. When last week we read, he hardened his heart. What's happened now? He and his servants. All of those who did not run out and put up their livestock and their slaves. So what's happening now? Be careful who you follow. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. What did it happen to his servants? Their heart was doing what? Coming hard toward the things of God. Be careful. We talk about, we're, let's, talk about, let's talk about love. Let's talk about transparency. Let's talk about those things. And let's talk about them as a church family. Number one, are you willing to have the conversation with others? Number two, I don't know where you find yourself in this story. But I want you to know, I continue to find myself being Pharaoh in this story. I don't know why. I, I'm definitely not Moses. Moses listened to God. He did what God said. I don't know about you, but I struggle being that. I have absolutely no problem being Pharaoh because he just does what? Man, whatever. He's, he's over here going, whatever, God. Whatever. I'm going to do whatever I want to go do. I find myself, I don't know about you, but I find myself being able to connect to that person a lot easier. But why is that? Is because we, as sinners in a world, we are easily to go look at God and go, I don't care. You may not say that out loud, but that's what you said in your heart. You look at God and you go, mm, I don't care. Do you care about others? Are you going to ask them about how their salvation is going? Mm, I don't care. It's amazing to me, and I want you to know, church, I, I've said this for, I, this is the first time I've said it. But it's amazing to me in our theology and in our churches, we will say, hey, we want people to go to heaven. But when we walk out, we live a life that really is telling them they can go to hell, and I don't care. You have a loved one? Have you told them about Christ? If the answer is no, can I tell you? Can I ask you? Can I, in, in spite of Valentine's Day, I will tell you, you do not love them. Actually, you hate them. Why? You're looking at someone, and you're going to say, I hate you enough that I know truth. I know there's a warning. I hate you so much that I'm not going to tell you about, about Jesus Christ. On this day, of uh, getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day, whatever, what the, the best version of love we can ever show someone else really is telling them about Christ. Well, what if they get mad at me? Hallelujah. They will not be the first. They will not be the last. Welcome to earth. What will they do? Not stop the thing, God. Have a conversation with them. Especially those, and again, not those people that you go, oh, I think they're Christian. Have a conversation with them. Hey, tell them, share with me your story. Share with me your testimony. Be willing to look at them and go, hmm, I want you to know that I love my heart. I don't think you're saying Pharaoh turned his heart, and not only did he turn his heart, but he started the people he was leading or leading and following along with him. Church, this is what I have for you today. Let's, let's, let's finish it up with this. i got three questions for you. The hardest one is, do I know better? Many of you have been in church your entire life. Okay? You have read and maybe have forgotten more about this book than some people will ever read. All right? I'm not, I, I got you. I have to start off with the question, do I know better? How do I know better? Well, have you studied God's Word? Do you know what it says? 
If your answer is yes in any form, patient, form or, or way of thinking about it, if the answer is yes, I have studied it, then guess what? You know better. Do I know the difference between acknowledgement and repentance? And I want you to know this is really, this is really close. The way to differ this is to say to yourself, God, I have done this. Is that repentance or acknowledgement? It's just acknowledgement. God, I have done this. God, I have sinned. God's word says that he will do what? He will forgive us of our sins. We can come to him seven times seven thousand. As many times as Full of grace and full of love. He will say what? I forgive you. But what is, what's the difference? What is, what's the next step? Repentance. I want you to have some of you in just a few moments. You're going to have to pray along with me. And your prayer is going to be, God, help teach me repentance. Where I not only acknowledge that sin, but I leave that sin with you. And I turn, which is actually the word repentance. It's a turning. And I go a different direction than that sin was leading me. And I want you to know, can I, let's, let's start connecting together a couple other things along with it. Some of that repentance, some of that turning is the people that I follow. <coughs> hey, you know what? i got a Pharaoh in my life, and I'm, I'm not sure where he's taking me. All right, well, we, where are we turning? Where are we going back towards God? Do I put my trust in things other than God? If there's ever one statement that I want to sum up the whole plagues of Egypt with is this. Do I put my trust in other things other than God? If the answer is yes, maybe, I don't know. Take some time this week. Take some time today to study. Examine your heart. Challenges. This, I mean, I want you to know, there's so many times there's challenges where, I, where it really is, hey, go do this out there this week, and, and, and those evangelism and those things are still there. The best thing that you can challenge, the best way that you can show love, specifically to yourself and specifically to God today and tomorrow, is this. Examine your own life. You can do it in the, in the privacy of, of your own home and in, in, in a quiet corner. Do I? Do I put my trust in things other than God? Because I want you to know, when God says He's coming after your heart, He will stop at nothing. Church, I don't know where you are today, but if you're one of these, I want to take just a moment to pray. I'm going to ask you to please stand. We're going to take just a moment to pray as we close this up. I, uh, I want you to know we're gonna we're, after we get done praying we'll have a couple of other quick announcements and then we'll have a, a, a quick prayer of dismissal. But um, I want to take a moment just right now and you don't uh, guys don't play music. I just I just want us to take just a moment and I want us to pray for this. Okay. Number one, bow your head, close your eyes, and pray along with me. Number one, do I know better? And I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. If you do not know Christ as Savior today, maybe that's where you are. You don't, you don't know better, but you never studied. Okay, let's pray. Let's start with Jesus. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And I want you to know that that's probably the easiest statement in the entire Bible because if you tell me that I'm a sinner, my answer to reply back to you would be, yes, and I understand that. God's Word also simply says that if we believe in Jesus and we confess Him as our Savior, it says we will be saved. If that's where you are today, I want you just to simply do that. Believe in Jesus. Confess Him with your mouth. God, I, I want to confess you as, as Savior of my life. And I want you to know it simply is that. Christ says you will be saved. And I want you to know if that's your prayer, and if that's where you are right now, here in just a few moments, I want to take, I want, as, as you're shaking hands with me, come by. Tell me. Let, inform me. Let me know. Tell someone else that's close to you, hey, I want you to know I accept that Christ is Savior today. I believe in Him. For others, God, it, it, it's, a, it's a prayer for us just to, God, I don't, God, help me because I know better. You help me study, Lord. You help me stir, Lord. You help me do these things. Make this where you are today. Make this where your prayer is.
But God, we pray today, we pray that you would, you would open up our eyes, Lord, as we study your word, as we take the time to dive into it and, and, to, and to truly know better, Lord. May we also take the time not just have head knowledge. May we not just have the acknowledgement, oh Lord, of, of sin and those types of things. But may we take on the action of it as well. May we take on the action of, of bringing it to you in our hearts and our minds to be able to say to you, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me of this. Help me turn away from sin. Turn towards your holiness so that I might be able to, to, to do that. And Lord, it's not under my own strength, not under my own power. It's all in you. But Lord, help me start that process. Help me begin that. Lord, I also pray that for us as, a, as, we, stu- as we take the time, and we're getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day, and we, it's an opportunity for us to show love towards one another. Lord, may we take the time, either the day, tomorrow, sometime this week, and, and really examine in our hearts have we put something else in front of you? Have we put something else there? Has something else become God in our lives? And if it has, Lord, may again, may we not only acknowledge, but may we come and repent of it from as well. God, I thank you for all these things that you've done, and thank you for all the blessings you have. It's in your son's name we do pray. Amen. At this point in time, I wanted to give just a couple of other quick announcements before we leave. Again, remember uh, the, super, the Super Family uh, event this afternoon. I pray, please come by. We're going to start about 6 o'clock. I think the, the pregame stuff starts like at 6.30, and then, you know, well, pregame stuff starts like at noon today. Um, mm-hmm. And then kick off, we'll watch kick off. And again, come by for an hour, come by for an hour and a half. Just come by and fellowship with us. We hope that you will have a, we think you have a great time with that as well. Also, don't forget about the blood drive information is right out there as well. I want to ask uh, Mr. Tom, if you would please close us in the word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we, we're so privileged to be able to be in a place like this today, be in your house and hear the word of God taught in such a way that, Lord, we, we know that, uh, uh, that you rule and reign uh, among your people. And Lord, we pray for every heart today that uh, uh, Lord, you've examined them and that we examine our hearts, Lord, and we know that uh, we have that assurance that we are living for Christ. For those who aren't, Lord, we just pray that you continue to, to uh, tenderize their heart to the Word of God and to the things of God that they may know that you are real. And that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, down the cross. That you indeed put your blood, uh, uh, shed your blood at the cross that we might go free. And Lord, we just pray for every home and for every life. Lord, that as we go out to the door, that you'll just continue to bless in the midst of your people. Give you the honor and praise for the great things you do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen.